All right, guys, so I highly recommend you stick around for this one because I feel like there's going to be some stuff in this that will benefit you guys and possibly, hopefully, inspire you as well. Now, I've seen a lot of YouTubers do this particular video, and I don't typically do this sort of like trendy video stuff, but I felt like I had a little bit of a different story than what I was seeing from the other ones that I was watching, so I decided to go ahead and do it, and hopefully you guys get something from this. So this is going to be my coding timeline, and the way that I'm going to be breaking this down is year by year, and I'm going to be going over the highlights of each year, and each year is going to have a theme associated with it, and then we're going to go all the way from when I very first started coding all the way until now. Before I go ahead and get started, if you guys will please subscribe and give this video a like, I would really appreciate it. I wanna keep reaching as many people as possible and teaching them how to code and giving them inspiration. So the more likes and the more subscriptions I get, the better the YouTube algorithm loves me. So please share this video, subscribe, like all that great stuff. Let's go ahead and get started. So for me, my journey starts in 2014, and I'm calling this the eye-opening year. Now, the reason why I'm calling this the eye-opening year is because previously, I didn't know what sort of jobs you could get in computer science. I knew computer science was something you could study in college, but I didn't know what sort of jobs you could actually get with computer science. So that lack of knowledge was keeping me from actually pursuing what I do now. It was literally holding me back. The ignorance was holding me back. So I'm calling this the eye-opening year because it opened my eyes to what it is I was able to do. So this is how that year pretty much went. I worked at a gas station. I worked minimum wage in a bad neighborhood, third shift. I was pretty much miserable. I decided to quit my job. And when I quit my job, I was like, oh, well, now I don't have a job. I barely have any money, but I was living cheaply. So I knew that I had an opportunity or at least a little bit of free time to go ahead and try to pursue some sort of career. So I needed to do some research. I already knew that I liked technology because I was already like taking apart laptops and just seeing how computers worked. And I really enjoyed the process of taking apart laptops and just like replacing the parts and that sort of thing. So I knew I liked technology, but I didn't really know what sort of jobs were available in technology or like how much they paid. I, I knew absolutely nothing about the professional side of technology. So I went ahead and hit the internet. And so I stumbled across a free computer science course on YouTube and I was really interested in what I was seeing there, but I knew computer science was a course or a degree that you could get in college. And I knew that people go to college because they want a good career but I had absolutely no idea what sort of careers you could get with a computer science degree. I had no idea what sort of tech jobs existed for computer science. I didn't even really know what computer science was. So I Googled what sort of jobs can you get with computer science? And I just went down the list and saw programming and I was like, what exactly is programming? So I did a little bit more research, figured out what programming was on a very high level and then decided, you know what, I'm gonna give this a shot. So at the time, Resources were not nearly as advanced as they are today. There was a limited number of resources, but one of the main resources I found myself on was Reddit. And I eventually found myself on Codecademy and I started a Python course. It was completely free and I just went all the way through the Python course. It was very interesting to me. I loved it. I knew this was exactly what I wanted to do. After completing the Python course, I knew I wanted to keep going, but I didn't really exactly know what I was supposed to do with Python. So I went ahead and decided to expand my knowledge and I took the HTML and CSS course. So by the end of 2014, I had figured out what career I wanted. I began pursuing that knowledge that I needed in order to get the career. And I had finished a couple of free courses on the internet. So moving on to 2015. So I'm calling 2015 the hands-on year. Now this one is a little bit weird for me because even though I'm calling it the hands-on year and there's a reason for that, it was also very unique for other reasons as well. And I'm gonna go into a little bit of personal details about this year, but I just want you to kind of understand this year was a huge turning point for me. So to start off, the very first thing that I realized I wanted to do in 2015 was to start dabbling with game development. And I found out that I could actually start doing that um, through Unity 3D, but I needed to learn C Sharp. So what I did was I started learning C Sharp, but I started learning C Sharp by literally hands-on experience through Unity 3D. What I was doing was I was following a bunch of YouTube tutorials on how to build certain platforming aspects of games and just kind of learning C Sharp as I went through the process of building these things out. Making video games was insanely fun because I could save all the code that I just wrote and then immediately see it in effect right in front of me. It was really neat. I eventually made my own Android game. The game was terrible, it flopped, but uh, my friends played it. They told me that it was very difficult and possibly rage quit material, but <laughs> I accepted that as a compliment and was pretty proud of what I had done. In that same stretch of time, I was also experimenting a lot with Blender and 3D modeling. So I was just kind of like basically dabbling a lot with different types of software all around the game development field. 
Now, what makes this year a little bit weird for me is that I had just recently up and moved. So when I quit my job last year in 2014, I needed somewhere to go. So I decided to move in with some family across the country. When I did that, I basically locked myself in my room and spent a several months just coding. I wouldn't recommend this method, but, but I basically coded nonstop for several months. That's all I did. And because I did that, what ended up happening was I learned a lot in a very short amount of time because that's all I did. That was my life. I just coded and that was it. I woke up, grabbed an energy drink, started drinking the energy drink, started coding, and that was all I did until it was time to go to sleep. And that was not very healthy and I don't recommend that, but that is what I did. And that was kind of what makes that year a little bit weird for me because when I think back on 2015, all I can really remember is just coding. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and go into 2016, which I'm going to be calling the leveling up year. Now going into 2016 was really interesting because I had just finished uh, creating a video game and like I said, I was coding pretty much 24 seven, but I was definitely realizing like, hey, when am I gonna get to the point where I'm ready to have a job? Like. I'm wasting a lot of time here. At least that's how I felt. I felt like I was wasting time. So I knew that I needed to level up my skills and start learning more intermediate advanced level programming topics so that I could go ahead, feel confident enough to get a job. So I changed my research a little bit. Instead of researching different coding languages and researching what was popular, et cetera, what I decided to do this time was research like where are the jobs? What areas of programming are most popular with employers? which actually led me to learning Ruby on Rails. Now, I was never a master of Ruby on Rails and I never really put that much time into learning Ruby on Rails, but it led me to at least beginning some Ruby on Rails projects. And when I did that, I realized, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and pretty much forget about C Sharp for a little while, even though I had just spent basically six months straight just doing nothing but C Sharp. Now, I didn't get rid of C Sharp completely. I still played around with it inside of Visual Studio and was building like Windows apps and that sort of thing. But I, for the most part, I realized if I wanted to get a job, like I was gonna focus on web development. So I started learning Ruby on Rails and I was like, this is pretty cool, but I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm not really a huge fan of Ruby. So I found Django, which is a Python, almost a Python equivalent. It's different, but I'm just gonna call it a Python equivalent because it is a MVC framework, very similar to Ruby on Rails. I, I decided to do that. But then like, as I was coding in Django, I realized I'm doing a lot of copying and pasting. Like, I don't really know what the code is that I'm writing here. I need to learn what it is I'm writing. So this begins the leveling up process that I was talking about earlier. So I picked up a big book. I don't really remember which book it was unfortunately or else I would link it to you guys because it was actually really awesome. It was a massive Python book and I just started going through some of the practice projects that were inside of that following it and I was learning a lot that I had previously just glossed over because I was just like, you know what, if I can copy it from the internet and paste it, then I know it but that is not correct. Instead, I really wanted to learn how this stuff was working. And so that's what I began doing. And when I finally got comfortable enough with my job to where I felt like I didn't have to do that much more out of work studying to kind of level up my skills for my actual current job of repairing computers, I spent my time outside of work coding. 100% of my time outside of work was coding. And I picked up Android development. So I started learning Java and I started learning how to build apps using Java. And it was late 2016 that I finally decided to start applying for programming jobs that were nearby, which in my neighborhood, there was not very many. There was maybe three or four. I applied and I actually got an interview to one of them. I did really good on the first interview and then I felt like I really bombed the second interview. However, I still got the offer at the end of it. Here was the problem though. In order to go ahead and go through with the hiring process, I had to get the Security Plus certification in under a month. Now I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do this. It was very difficult. I remember studying nonstop. I had to stop programming because I had to spend all of my free time studying for the Security Plus certification, which is all about cybersecurity. It was very, very difficult. I remember passing out reading study books all the time and stuff. It was, it was rough, but I finally, I think after three weeks, decided to go ahead and take it. I actually passed. I was very happy about that. But then when I went to go back to <laughs> email the guy, I, he just never responded. It turned out that that company actually lost their funding, but I don't want to go through. I'm not going to say the name of the company or anything like that, but that was really unfortunate. But I'm going to look at that in a positive way and say, I really learned a lot when I was studying for the Security Plus certification. I learned a lot about information security. Okay, this brings me into 2017, which I'm going to be calling the transformational year. And the reason why I'm calling that is because I've transformed as a person completely in that year, in my opinion. So at the very end of 2016, I was already applying for programming jobs. So by the beginning of 2017, I already knew that I wanted to leave Best Buy for a programming position somewhere. 
and I applied for jobs all over the country. But I ended up moving to Colorado. Before moving, I had just started learning Angular. So I, I felt somewhat comfortable with Angular, but I was like, I'm gonna move to Colorado where I feel like there's more jobs than where I was previously. So I moved there. And when I moved there, I instantly began looking for jobs and I found one pretty quickly. I think within just three or four days, I got my first interview. Now, when you just up and leave and go to a different part of the country, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, I'm gonna just be honest, I did it and I was living in my car. So I, it was something that I really, I really sacrificed my current situation because I knew this is what I wanted to do. After I had this interview, I 100% was like, all right, I'm going to be as disciplined as possible. I'm gonna start watching motivational YouTubers and just like really try to figure out how to be as disciplined as possible so that I could get as far as I could in the shortest amount of time. So in doing that, I, I started lifting weights. I started focusing a lot on my diet. I started focusing a lot on my mental health and making sure I got enough sleep. And when I got the job after interviewing for it, I spent 100% of my effort just working as hard as I could at that job. I wanted to level up at that job. Basically, just in the span of a few months, I went from living in Georgia, working at Best Buy, to moving to Colorado, living in my car, to having a programming job in just a very short amount of time. And I knew that if I could just keep up that momentum, I could completely transform who I was, completely transform my life. So that's what I began doing. So that was a huge part of it. And when I was on the job, another thing I wanna highlight is that I learned a lot about software engineering in general, things from DevOps, things like operating systems such as Mac OS and Linux, which I had never really messed with in the past. I was mostly just using Windows. I was learning a lot about just the overall general process of software engineering, working in a team, working with senior developers, pair programming, Scrum, etc. And towards the end of the year there, I actually decided to go ahead and try college because the job that I was working at actually decided they would pay for it. So I actually only stayed there for one or two semesters. And in that time, I learned calculus, which was very difficult for me because I hadn't been to school since high school. And even in high school, I didn't really do that well, just to be honest. So it was very difficult, but I ended up getting an A in calculus, which was really awesome. But after that, I dropped out of college because I knew that that was not the path I wanted to take. All right, this brings us into 2018, and I'm gonna be calling this the confidence year, and you'll see why in just a moment. But first, I just wanna start off by saying that 2018 began pretty strong. I was still working at that same job. Things were really looking good there. However, while I was there, I was studying a lot. I was really digging deep into the Angular framework and learning how that stuff worked underneath, and I was beginning to branch out and learn things like Electron, and I was really upping my skills, and I felt like there wasn't very much room to grow as a front-end developer there. There was a lot of room to grow as other types of developers, but as a front-end developer, it was really limited as to how much I could grow there. So I decided to start looking for other opportunities and I actually found one and I'll get to that in a moment. But before I get to that, I just wanna mention that I also started doing YouTube around this time. I started doing YouTube and it really just started off with me just basically coding certain apps and then talking about what it is I was writing as I was doing it and then kind of calling that a tutorial and it actually went really well, so I kept doing that, and now I'm still doing that to this day. Anyway, so I found another opportunity elsewhere. I decided to take it. It was a consulting position, and it was completely freelance, so it was I was basically running my own business at this point. Now, the reason why I'm calling this the confidence phase is because I had to have 100% confidence in myself in order to do this position. I had the skills to do it, but I really, I found it difficult to convince myself that I actually had the expertise necessary to do the job that I was actually hired to do in this new position. Honestly, I was moving very quickly. Um, you know, it was only just a year and a half, maybe at the most two years, I think it was a year and a half that I had just gotten my first programming job and now I'm doing consulting for massive companies. Um, so I, I moved very quickly, so I needed to build my confidence and I basically did and it went very well. This consulting position was still inside of an office. It was still at a physical location. I still had to drive to work. I still had to be at a place from a designated time to another designated time, you know, nine to five essentially. And I finally realized that what it is that would make me happy is if I could loosen that constraint. If I didn't actually have to physically be there and if I didn't have to work during a constricted set of time. That realization led me to quitting that consultation position, moving back to where I was previous to when I moved to Colorado and start really thinking about what it is I wanted to do. And that was at the very end of 2018. So that brings us into 2019. 
In 2019, I'm going to be calling this the entrepreneurial year. So in 2019, I actually was like, you know what? I'm going to start freelancing. It's going to be great. I had already done a consultation position in the previous year, which was technically freelancing, but it was nine to five still. So I'm going to give it another shot. I'm going to try freelancing, but this time, hopefully I'll have a better opportunity to not work nine to five at a particular location. Well, I got another position freelancing and it was exactly the same as the previous one. It was nine to five. It was basically like I was an employee, except I was working working under a contract. So honestly, I got out of that as quickly as I could because again, that's not what I was trying to do. That was just wasting my time, it felt like. So what I did was I tried to start making apps. I tried to um, take different avenues of ways to start a career in programming without me having to necessarily be at an office or work for an employer. The reason why I'm calling it the entrepreneurial year is because I spent a huge portion of the year trying to build apps, trying to grow my YouTube channel, trying to do different entrepreneurial things. And honestly, none of them really blew up the way that I was intending them to. And it, I realized how this is more of a long term game and that I needed to go ahead and find a job or go back to freelancing, at least in the short term, while I build these things up in the background. And also during this time, I spent a lot of time actually like digging in and mastering the JavaScript language, learning React, learning how all of this stuff works under the hood so that I could become a true expert in my field. And now we're in 2020. And honestly, I don't know what to call this year. This year is still happening. We're not even really halfway through it. And honestly, it has been a crazy year. Um, I think you all can agree with that. But let me just start off with what it is I was doing in the beginning of the year. In the beginning of the year, career wise, I was focusing a lot on algorithms, data structures, more complex things. I wanted to start how to um, solve way more advanced problems than just what I was doing in web development. I wanted to try to solve really complex problems. So I was trying to learn data structures and, and things you learn in computer science college. I was just basically trying to level up my skills even more trying to go back into the level up phase like I did in 2016. But um, things took a turn. <laughs> I actually started burning out a little bit because I was doing so much at once. I was doing a full time job. I was doing all this entrepreneurial stuff in the background and just like taking on any job that I could. And then eventually it just stacked up so high, I just burned out and that was not good. And then right at that time, the coronavirus happened. And so that didn't change too much for me with my work because I already worked remotely. But now I couldn't go out and do the things that I normally enjoy doing to kind of ease that stress. So now I was just stuck in the house 24 seven pretty much just doing nothing but coding again. And that's perfectly fine. But now I, I knew what I needed to do in order to get that work, work life balance going. And um, now I'm just kind of mastering the work life balance, remote work life, and still trying to produce awesome YouTube content for you guys. But here's what I've learned through my years. And this is the lessons I want you to take home from my experience. Each year does have its own kind of phase, at least in my opinion, it had its own kind of phase and it doesn't have to necessarily be for a given year. It's just any chunk of time, but you can break these down into phases. And I noticed that when I first started, it was a lot of trying to figure out, trying to trying to get rid of ignorance, like trying to figure out what exists, what sort of opportunities are out there. That was the first kind of phase. The second phase was like learning, learning, learning as much as possible, learning different technologies, learning, learning, learning. The third phase was like, picking a technology, sticking with it and learning a lot about that one. So leveling up in that particular area. And then once once I was done with that, it was kind of going into a phase of trying to see how far I could go, like trying to figure out what it is I wanted to do long term. And then finally, where I'm at now is I'm trying to figure out how to balance my life with all of these things. So I know what it is I want to do long term. I'm trying to make sure that I have a good foundation to build upon as I do this. And now I'm kind of looking forward and trying to figure out what the next phase is. If anybody has any advice, I would love to hear it because I'm always open for learning and open to hearing other people's stories as well. So if you have a story, please feel free to leave it in the comments. If you have any advice, I'd love to hear that as well. If you haven't already, please thumb this video up, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys in the next video.